and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, and I am here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Oh, my God. Happy Tuesday slash Wednesday, wherever yes. you're listening. We are gathered here tonight for us to talk about Seeking Sister Wife. We are on season five. I think this was episode seven. Yeah. What was this called? Seeking uh, Commitment. Seeking Commitment. Or no, Seeking Answers. Seeking Answers. Well, we're going to get into all of that. But before we do, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We have dumb opinions and we're not afraid to say them no matter what you think. We're going to say them, okay? Yeah. And so if you're so for you, you might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you're down and you're ready to party, welcome to this dumpster. Yeah. And if you are down and ready to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe. And join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We have so much bonus shit up on there. That's where the real party's at. Yes. And it is the best way to support yes. what we're doing in this dumpster. Yeah. Finally, if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. Really, everything you do helps us in the algorithm. And the more people notice us, the more raccoons we have in this yeah. dumpster. Yeah. And it becomes a party. Yes. All right. Um, before we get into the episode, I understand there are a couple of comments that you want to highlight. Yeah, there were a couple YouTube comments we got last week on our video about these crazy people on Seeking Sister Wife. And there was an article of juicy gossip about Danielle Maryfield that we can get into too. Oh, okay. But one of the comments, this was like my favorite one. It was by at Doc Arnifel. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but they said, I have a different take on Danielle coming in for a kiss with Natalia. Oh, okay. I think that she sabotaged the relationship with Roberta by encouraging Ix, Garrick's relationship with Leah, who was the other girl he was dating in America. Okay. Now she's trying to wreck their relationship, the very heterosexual Natalia, by appearing to want a lesbian hookup with her. Hmm. <clears throat> Which I thought was interesting, just because Danielle was also overly affectionate with Roberta, and it was weird. Was it? Yeah. A little cringy? Yeah. Well, that's an interesting idea, but like, why would she put herself through all of these motions and do all of these things, even going so far as to divorce this man that she loves for some reason <laughs> that I cannot fathom? Like, why would she put herself through all of this only to sabotage it? I don't know. But maybe it's because she's mm. fucking delusional and yeah. she's like, oh, it's God's will, but she doesn't really actually want it. So she's just going to manipulate her way out of it. I just thought that was kind of an interesting, yeah. like, theory behind Danielle trying to kiss Maybe Natalia. it's even, like, subconscious. Ooh. She doesn't even know why she's doing it. She's, like, not clear on what her intention is. Ooh. She just knows that she has to sabotage it. Yeah, that might be another That'd thing. Be interesting. Oh, my God. Yeah, my God. Deep psychological issues. <laughs> <laughs> and then another comment that I thought was interesting was by at TFD92 saying, having a family member who just went through the process of having his immigrant wife gain legal status through their marriage, he said the K-1 visa would never have been granted to Danielle and Garrick if their divorce was publicized as it was, because it was publicized on TV. Intentions of polygamy are a big thing they are drilled about. Mm. So I think the courtroom scene with Danielle was fake. There's also a couple people on like, not a couple people, there's a couple theories going around on like Reddit saying that Danielle and Garrick's divorce was totally staged, but it wasn't because it's public record. Right. And it shows that they got divorced. But I think a lot of people are referring to the courtroom stage. It probably was mm. just for the cameras. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Did you watch that? No, I wasn't watching it at the time. Yeah. Um, I've seen flashbacks to her crying in court. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was in court with her, right? Was he there? Yeah. That was very bizarre. Yeah. Um, but I was reading on Reddit too, and there's just like a lot of speculation about what kind of visa they would even bring Natalia in on. Is it going to be like one of them, their uh, fiance visas? Uh-huh. Is it going to be a marriage visa? Like, is he going to get married legally to Natalia and then get a marriage visa, which I think he can get an indefinite amount of marriage visa. So like really? if he brings her in and he divorces her and then he goes and marries somebody else, I think he can repeatedly get a marriage visa before a K-1, which I think is the fiance visa, oh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, at least Reddit says, you can only do twice in your lifetime. Oh. So I'm wondering how they're going 
to do this? Because absolutely, like if you are bringing somebody in on a green card, immigration grills you. And if they suspect that you're doing it fraudulently for whatever reason, not only do they deny you, but you can get into a lot of trouble. Oh, for sure. Like fines and criminal stuff. Yeah. So it just seems to me kind of weird that they would flagrantly be lying about it yeah. and putting it all out there if they know that they're going to do this for polygamy. Well, I, I, I just have no idea. I don't know. Or Garrick is just lying about wanting to marry all these bitches and he's just going there to fuck them and then be like, oh, they broke up. Like, I I don't know. When I was watching this episode, I'm like, what if they like paid Roberta off? Or like, what if Garrick paid Roberta off or something? It was like, I don't want to deal with you. But I don't know. I just think he's like shady. I think there's some lying going on. Obviously, there's some lying oh, yeah. going on. And I just don't know if he's like actually wanting to marry all of these women, especially I if mean, they're from out of country. I think I've been saying from the beginning, I think he just wants to fuck. Yeah. I think he is trying to create a pretense for fucking and he's calling it religious, but he doesn't even need to do that. Just call it what it is. I don't think Danielle's going to leave you. Right. If you tell her like, I want to open the marriage. I want to have other chicks, but I love you. You're my main bitch. I think she wouldn't leave you. Well, that's not godly though, okay. because God spoke to is him in a vision. Is he godly though? <laughs> No, they lie. <laughs> They're drinking all this alcohol, which mm. I have my theories about because he strikes me as a drunk. And so does she, by the way, uh -huh. when they get into that fight. Well, we'll get there. Yeah. But, like they are the least godly people. Oh, that for I know. sure. For sure. Speaking of their alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> there was an article you sent me. Yeah, that was from 2021. So just be just to be clear. Yeah. And this was from starcasm.net. And I'll just read the blurb. It just says, according to court records, Danielle was charged with driving under the influence in September of 2016. The initial charges also included misdemeanor child abuse with no injury, which I assume means that Danielle had one or more children in the vehicle with her at mm -hmm. the time she was pulled over. In November of 2016, a deal was reached resulting in the child abuse charge and a lane usage violation charge being dismissed. So Danielle looks like she had been given one year of probation with some of the standard DUI provisions. And then one year later on November 30th of 2017, Danielle's probation was terminated and the DUI charge was dismissed after successful completion, hmm. which I'm like, dang, is she a drunk? Like driving around in your car all drunk by yourself is already really fucking bad. Yeah. But doing it with your children in the car, these poor kids that they're taking with them to all these international destination so their father can get his rocks off like that's wild to me absolutely wild it's not just a lapse of judgment that's like do you have a problem with alcohol and we're talking 2016 so that's eight years ago i know and things have only gone downhill for danielle or maybe she thinks they're going uphill because they're on tv i don't know i'm like when you send me that i'm like dang that explains a lot of her behavior mm -hmm. and i don't know whenever she does her ig live she's always kind of like flushed in her face i'm not mm -hmm. saying anything but you are i am I'm implying yeah <laughs> but I'm just like the alcohol flush it would make a lot of sense why she's like dealing with all of this mm -hmm. dealing with it because she's drunk all the time <laughs> because yeah. her husband's cheating on her yo he looks drunk all the time too like when they went on the bike ride yeah they had beers I believe those were beers that they unpacked and then later when they were fighting she sounded drunk as she was filming him in the kitchen and he was drinking something that it was like so beer, weird and he looked pissed yeah and I just thought that whole thing was very strange. Big, yeah. And concerning. Yeah. And wild. But again, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. But that's interesting that she has had a DUI. Yeah. I'm not really surprised by that. Me neither. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you're a piece of shit for having your kids in the car with you yes. while you were doing that. Like, Unequivocally. Yeah. Period. Period. All right. Well, let's get into this episode. All right. Well, let's start with the boring couples first because there weren't a lot of things going on in this episode. It was mainly like Danielle and Garrick was like the highlight of all of it. Okay. So we'll start with the Ryans, which is just boring. It was like a recap of them being all sad because they saw Stephanie and Stephanie didn't want to be with them mm -hmm. after she told them not to come to Colorado. Right. And they did. What do you think about Becky's reaction though? She was just kind of like really sad. And I then... feel like she's taking it harder than Justin is. Right? I feel like she's really coming across as depressive. Yeah. And um, very sorrowful, which again, I think lends credence to this idea that it's it's not just about having a sister wife. It's about having a relationship of some kind with this woman, which is why, again, she's wearing that necklace. But she mm -hmm. just seemed really bummed out. Justin is just like, look, I tried. I did everything humanly possible. Did you? Really? 
everything humanly okay. po- I did everything humanly possible to give her what she needed and wanted but like now I'm done it's time to move on and then of course when we get to the preview he's already dating some other random so like how much did you really love her like how <laughs> broken hearted are you about this I know he was saying like just last week like she's the love of my life I love her so much I'd die for her take a bullet for mm-hmm. her and now this episode he's like yeah fuck that hoe yeah whatever <laughs> moving on next <laughs> I'm like whatever freaking weirdo. they're just very strange did you see the bedroom though and how disorganized everything yeah. was and like how things were piled there was crap everywhere on desks yeah and shelves and i'm just like oh god don't you know that national television is going to be broadcasting this to raccoons in a dumpster <laughs> over here and i'm going to be looking at everything with my monocle you messy messy polygamous culty people i know dirty dirty, dirty. People. i was looking with my forensic yeah. mo- raccoon monocle <laughs> and i'm like do you got any sex toys or lube hanging out Net anywhere lotion and things like that yeah yeah and yeah. bottles of this or that uh-huh lube yeah <laughs> They're weirdos. They're I mean, gross. I have bottles of this or that, but sure. like, I'm just like, if I, let me tell you, <laughs> if there was going to be a camera crew in my house, can you even imagine? Dude. For Thanksgiving, I'm insane. I start on Monday, dude. I'm cleaning windows. I'm cleaning um, baseboards. I'm cleaning so deeply. Just for your brother. Just for my dumb brother who's going to be drunk the entire time. <laughs> he literally could give a <laughs> shit less. He doesn't care at all. He's going to be unconscious. Yeah. But like, if it was a camera crew. Oh my God. I mean, it would be like an Airbnb. Yeah. Be for like, sure. Sterile, <laughs> so fucking clean. Yeah, and these people are up on national TV with a bedroom like that. I know. That's how I know they're bad people. I know. <laughs> Cannot be trusted. Not at all. Dirty. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then we have the Davis family, which was also kind of yeah. boring because the girls, so April and Jennifer, take Danielle out to a fucking rage room. Which I'm like, how many times do we have to see rage rooms on TLC? Although I would love to go to one. Yeah. And sidebar, like what an interesting small business idea. Right. Because like you don't have to have a whole lot of stuff. All you have to (laughs) do is go to the Goodwill or the Salvation Army, get a whole bunch of dishes and bullshit, Mm -hmm. fill it in the room. They had like some broke down couch on the outside where people waited. It would probably be low overhead. Oh, yeah. Lots of profit. Yeah. We should think about it. I know. I would totally be down for Mm -hmm. it because I think that'd be so much fun. You'd be in there every day. Oh, for sure. But I would be a much calmer person. Yeah. (laughs) You would be. I would. But they go to a rage room because they got to let off some steam because everything's been so stressful since Danielle went and stayed at a hotel for two days and left the family. And then April. But it's been weeks, right? Since yeah, that's happened. And allegedly. it's been weeks since she had her conversation with April, mm-hmm. wherein she promised never to do that again. Right. And then April's like, well, we were, we're thinking about dating again. So I'm just trying to figure out a right time to bring it up. And then the very next scene, they go out to dinner or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're like, so Danielle, it's been a couple weeks, like two weeks. BT dubs. <laughs> Wanted to talk about this. And we want to date other women. Are you cool with that? And of course, Danielle's like, sure. As long as there's like conditions or whatever. I'm nervous about it, but it's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was interesting how April brought up in their family the dating is like spearheaded by the women, similar to the Salahadoos, Shabooties, Shabooties, um, and how the Nyla, also Becky, yeah, and Becky. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why? Why are all the women? I don't know. In charge of that? Is it a sex thing? I don't know. I mean, it seems to go against my nature, but right. I'm like, I don't stand for all women. I just I can't even imagine it. With regard to the Davis family, the only thing I feel like is so pressing that we must talk about <laughs> what is Danielle's fucking eyelashes. I mean, like it's like she literally had two different eyelashes on her eyes. One yeah. was like a big fucking spider <laughs> eyelash. And the other one was probably <laughs> three or four times smaller. Yeah. I'm like, what? Are, <laughs> I mean, your eye, your eyeshadow is beautiful. Yeah. Your like contouring blush skin is gorgeous. But like, how did you happen to miss that your fucking <laughs> eyelash is this big? And your other one is this small. It looks bizarre. (laughs) I'm like, what is going on? Can somebody help her? Like the makeup artist or your sister wives? Can somebody help poor Danielle? I know. That's what's so crazy. I'm like, (laughs) the sister wives didn't call her out on that. Productions letting her go on TV like that. I'd Mm -hmm. be so fucking pissed. I mean, I've been noticing it, but it was like really glaring this episode. Oh, really bad. I just wanted to hold that like just take them off <laughs> just what is this fascination anyway with your generation and the younger generation with fake eyelashes they're so bad i know it's really bad and like there's now like eyelash people that will 
do it extension. Mm-hmm. So like they'll glue little pieces of hair onto your eyelashes, which look nicer because they look more natural. Mm-hmm. But the fake eyelashes, I'm like, why? They're really bad. I know, really bad. Do you bad. think other people are going to think that that occurs in nature? <laughs> like they're not. They're going to know that those are fake as fuck and they look terrible. <laughs> they look really bad. Anyway, Danielle looked crazy. Yeah, she did. But maybe she God pulled one off. It. I don't know. I'm like, girl, fix it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and then we have the Salahuddin's. Yes. Shabooties. Mm-hmm. And this was interesting because they yes. go on a date with a 26 year old girl named what? Alexis. Alexis. Yeah. And so <laughs> I thought Nyla looked amazing. Her fucking hair was mm-hmm. on point. She looked so beautiful. Naeem was whatever. Yeah. And they show up to like a wine tasting or something. It's not a wine tasting. Like a it's bar. like a wine bar, Ugh. which I guess they think is really fancy or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's not. No. Like the I was reading on Reddit, people are like, there's like a plastic number on your table. Your waiter is wearing a t-shirt. Like, why are you guys acting all bougie when Alexis walks in looking adorable yeah. in a skirt that I wish I could wear, quite frankly. I know. And very young energy, but like immediately they were so judgmental. I'm like, okay, why are you guys trying to di- date a young person and then getting mad that this is a young person? I know, right? What did you expect? And I'm like, are they that much older? Are they like in their 40s probably? I would say 40s, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it is kind of, you know, kind of, mm, my mom's in her 40s. Like that would be kind of weird. But yeah, she shows up and she's wearing like a mini skirt, whatever, coochie cutter, fine. Yeah. She looks very cute. She's got a hot bob, whatever. She's like super excited to see them for some reason because I guess they like- <laughs> I have no idea why. I don't know. I guess they had like a date or something before or like they've been talking. They had been talking, yes. And they had such good energy and the vibe was on. It was great well i don't know because it felt to me like nyla went into that interaction already a little bit side-eyeing alexis because she was getting the vibe vibe check that um alexis was kind of digging on naeem and wanted to spend more time with naeem which is why i think she ultimately got into the rules and regulations conversation which by the way it's very unsexy on a date oh 100 we now get into the rules and the regulations of this open relationship yeah, that was fucking weird. Like right as Naeem goes to the bathroom, Nyla starts drilling her and is like, so how do you feel about dating him one-on-one? And Alexis is like, yeah, I don't see a problem with that. That's like the whole point, right? I'm not fucking you, right? So who cares? And Nyla's like immediately like, no, fuck this. Well, it kind of went down a little differently than that because Ny- Nyla immediately starts to say, okay, so this is how it kind of works. We don't date each other one-on-one initially like we want to go out all three of us like check out the energy see how we all do together as a thruple and then after we're all sure that we're comfortable then you and I can spend more time one-on-one and then you and Naeem can spend time one-on-one but like as she's saying this Alexis actually interrupts her and she's like well I don't even know about that yeah like because I'm okay to spend time with him one-on-one like I'm okay to do that which I thought was very youthful of her. Mm -hmm. I don't think she was trying to be disrespectful. You could see Nyla immediately take it as disrespect for being interrupted and also questioned. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who do you think you are though a little bit, Nyla? The meat Like you're out here um, looking for Poonani for your (laughs) husband and you're going to sit up here like all superior with your rules and regulations with a young woman. Like, come on now. It doesn't make any sense. All judgmental. And then he comes back and... Doesn't Alexis immediately turn to him and say, so what do you think? Do you want to do one-on-one or do you not? And he says, yeah, no, we don't do that. Like, we wait. I thought in the preview, we saw him saying that he was okay to do it, though. I thought the same thing, but I wonder if that was like a producer fake-out type thing or maybe they have another date later on that we see Maybe. but it looked like it was this yeah, scenario remember, and in the preview like nyla got really pissed on the couch yeah and she got up and she walked away so i'm not really sure when that is supposed to happen but both of them naeem and nyla are turned off immediately by alexis and i feel bad for her because she's just chowing on her chips she's eating her whole ass burger and i think they're vegan 
Because oh. like that big meal that they made for Jamila, uh-huh. like in the first or second episode, was like all fruit and all vegetables. They seem to live really, really cleanly. And mm. here's this young woman just eating all the fries and eating <laughs> fucking big greasy burger. And they just looked at her with such disdain. Oh, yeah. I don't know. They, I mean, they already turned me off, mm-hmm. but they really turned me off after that. Me too. They were fucking mean, Loki, because when she's tasting the wine and she's like, oh, it tastes like fruit snacks. Like, yeah. whatever. She's 26. Yeah. Like, it's not like she's got this developed palate to, for wine or whatever and they're like oh my god that's so weird that she's saying it tastes like fruit snacks like she needs to develop her taste she's obviously not mature enough for us i'm like oh shut up i know cringe i know and pretentious when they're interviewing alexis outside of the restaurant she's like oh my god they're so great we had such a good time i would love to see them again and inside the restaurant they're just talking shit about her immediately like, absolutely no we cannot continue with this girl she is way too young she is immature i'm like wow you know alexis is gonna see that yeah on tv she gave it the old college try and you guys are just shitting all over her and like do you guys think your prize is out here you're not prizes <laughs> naim somebody on reddit said that he's like missing a bunch of his teeth yeah he like, looks like it the reason that he doesn't open his mouth to articulate and express himself strongly is because he's got no teeth in there i'm like okay so you're marching around the country <laughs> looking for punani you ain't got no teeth in there but you're gonna presume to judge this beautiful young woman all for right real? okay you should be like feeling proud of yourself that a beautiful young woman would even want to be with you and that she thinks you're great yeah yeah as a 40 something year old toothless yeah (laughs) (laughs) i can't (laughs) yeah that whole thing was really weird nyla seemed super not into it at all and she's like i don't know why we even agreed to go out with her because naeem wanted to go out with her so like maybe that scene from the previews of like him being like oh yeah i was totally into it maybe that was cut out maybe or maybe there's another date maybe we're mixing everything up i hope so because these people cycle through they do partners so frequently it's kind of crazy yeah very crazy but that's the end of them for now and then we have the merryfields everybody's favorite oh my goodness listen they were kind of crazy this episode yeah so we first start off with garrick and danielle telling her family her brother her sister-in-law and her dad i think and dad and mom yeah Yeah. and they're like all at her house or whatever and they're like garrick's like yeah so we've decided that i'm gonna propose or i proposed to natalia and i'm gonna get married to her and danielle's brother and her sister-in-law are both like excuse me what right but why are they shocked because hasn't he done this horseshit before with roberta and i don't know who leia is but with leia roberta and now natalia so is it really so surprising i don't know i think they're surprised by like how quickly this one Mm. was because with roberta they were with her for like three years so it was like this ongoing like thing and i think it was like during i want to say it was during covid or like right before covid so they had issues like trying to see her blah 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 i don't know i don't care But that's probably why they were like so shocked because then they're asking him, well, how long has it been? He's Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, I've known her two months. And then I went and saw her Mm -hmm. for the first time and proposed to her and banged her in Cancun. Can I just repeat something that I've said a million times already? (laughs) But I, I simply cannot believe that they took their two sons to Cancun for their first meeting and his first bedding or fucking of Natalia. Yeah. That is so irresponsible to me, which again, it makes sense now that we see Danielle having her kids in the car, getting DUIs and shit, because like, who's thinking about these kids? Not them. These are children of narcissists. And children of narcissists end up really fucked up in this world Mm -hmm. um, and attracted to really fucked up people unless they get help. And I just, as I said before, I worry about these kids like it's one thing if you want to open your marriage it's one thing if you want to be a polygamist um, in the kingdom of god but to like haul your kids to another country for the first time you even meet somebody is so irresponsible and wrong to me super fucking gross and i'm surprised that like their family hasn't said anything about that like why didn't anybody be like hey can the boys stay with us while yeah. you go and do your weird cancun fuck experiment thing mm-hmm. with this chick that's 26 years old only a few years older than your kids like you're fucking weird and i was kind of annoyed with danielle's family in this moment too because while they're with garrick they're kind of 
they're expressing their concern and thinking that it's a little crazy. But then in their talking heads, they're way more expressive Mm -hmm. and way more like, this is absolutely insane. I think her brother says like, I don't think it's going to work out. It's like a 60, 40 chance, like 60% chance it's not going to work out. And he doesn't have any faith. It really makes me wonder who's holding the purse strings. Because I know that like some people say it's Garrick's construction company and like he brought Danielle's brother in as a partner. Other people say it was Danielle's family's construction business, even though it has his name on it. Yeah. And like, so they brought in Garrick and like before that he really didn't have anything because remember they did their taxes and she was a a waitress and she made way more than him. Right. Yeah. So I don't know what he used to do and how he was gainfully employed, but like, why would they be afraid to say something to that motherfucker? Like in the moment with the cameras on, like that is the time to strike. Right. But they seem like they feel like they can't, like their hands are tied. So that makes me think that maybe Garrick has more control over the business and over the funds than we previously thought. I wish I had clarity on the money. I know. I wish they would just show us the coins, but they never do because it's TLC. And maybe that's why Danielle stays too, because like this is her only job and like this is her only source of income and she's got two kids and like she's no longer even a legal wife. And like they start to bring something like this up in the conversation. Mm -hmm. They um, broach the subject of a prenup. Like, did you guys do a prenup? What about... And I'm wondering, like, what about your divorce agreement? Like, is it stated with clarity that she gets half of the house and half of the possessions and all of these things? Like, please tell me, Danielle, that you did that. No. But something makes me feel like she did not. Mm-mm. Like, she's dumb. Yeah. She's traumatized. She's abused. And I don't think she did that. No, I don't think she did it either because she's fucking dumb. Because she thinks that in the eyes of God... They're still married. They're going to be fine. And he's never going to leave her. But then at the end of their segment, like, we'll get to it when he goes to fucking Brazil. She's like all worried that he's going to leave her. And I'm like, so where's the cognitive dissonance? Like, I don't understand. As soon as he's gone, see. Yeah. When he's there, she's completely overtaken by his agenda. But as soon as he's gone, she has like some space to be clear about what's really happening. And of course, it seems like they had this huge fight before he left. Yeah. Like, I think it's because he's there and he's constantly convincing her that this is God's will and this is what they're supposed to do. So she never has time or space and she works with him to actually think for herself. I mean, that's being very gracious to Danielle. Yeah. Because again, I think she might be very diabolical and a potential sex trafficker. Yeah. But like, it could be that that she doesn't think clearly when he's around because he doesn't want her to. Mm, That would make sense, especially if he's like super manipulative and psychologically abusive, which I think he is. I do as well. But like also, I don't think she's like completely innocent too if she's fucking driving drunk with her kids. But like, you know, whatever. So after the whole conversation with the family, the sister-in-law, I think, has a segment where she's like, this is fucking insane. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, what the fuck is going on? But like, I can't say anything because they believe God's talking to them. So Mm -hmm. like, whatever. And they just kind of let it go, which I can't relate. If I had a family member making some dumb ass fucking choices like this in their life, I would say something. Even if I'm, if it meant they didn't talk to me anymore, I'd be like, okay, right. Peace. Yeah. But I don't want to be complicit in this weird, yeah. fucked up sex trafficking. But I mean, if all your thing. money was tied to it, you'd be a little more hesitant, <sighs> that's right? That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I'm wondering about that. I wish we knew. Yeah. I wish we knew. And then after the segment with the family then we have a scene with garrick going on a bike ride with his bff bill who's been friends with him since like fifth grade or something i'm like geez this guy's seen garrick yeah be crazy absolutely nuts but like (laughs) the internet's talking about how they arrive at the picnic table by the river and garrick says something like wow that was really a great 50 miler i know yeah and there's no sweat i know his friend bill is wearing (laughs) jeans yeah i mean the the bikes are heavy Uh uh-huh garrick's shoes are bright white like you're telling me you just biked for 50 miles on Colorado trails and yeah. your sneakers are fucking white and totally. nobody's sweating out here. Like it was so <laughs> fake. Yeah. And you also don't see like a, a cooler with beers in it. But no. all of a sudden, as soon as they sit down on the at the picnic table, they've got beers. Yeah. Cringe as fuck. They drove to some scenic outlook or whatever, brought their bikes out to act like they went on a bike. Right. Cringe. Great 50 miler. Super okay. Great. Eric. 
with your wife beater. I'm macho. I'm a man. I wear tank tops and I go on bike rides. <laughs> Fucking loser. But yeah, so they're talking about his relationship with Natalia, how he's going to go to Brazil. And then he's talking about his issues with Danielle because him and Danielle are having problems because Danielle doesn't feel like Natalia cares too much about her. Yeah, or like doesn't want to focus on fostering a relationship with Danielle and seems mainly more focused on Garrick. Yeah. And Bill is just like, well, yeah, man, that's just kind of the way it goes. He's just like very like, yeah, very neutral. Weird. But he's like, and so you want to bring these women under one roof? And Garrick starts talking about how awesome it would be like if they learn how to act, if these women can just be nice and keep sweet, docile girls, mm-hmm. it would be so fucking wonderful. But doesn't say anything about what he's going to do to facilitate that kind of experience. It's all about the women and whether they can control themselves and be good girls. Of course. So gross. And then in his talking head, he talks about how he thinks women are too emotional. Right. And that because they are so emotional, that leaves them vulnerable to bad thoughts. Thoughts that they shouldn't pay attention to. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? And you're the one who has objectively a whole host of bad thoughts. Yeah. Perverted thoughts. Yeah. Fucking sick thoughts, fucking you deviant. sicko. Yeah. Yes. Disgusting. Well, in this scene, like the only thing I really know, it was the first time I noticed it was the beer and they covered it, right? They yeah. had like a cover for the beer, but I'm like, huh, is he, is he drinking? Because when I went to evangelical fundamentalist church, and I'm sure when you did too, like, Drinking was frowned upon. Oh, yeah. I'm like, and, you know, I think he was also drinking wine and drinking alcohol in Cancun. And I'm like, huh, I wonder how much he drinks Mm. because he's dull as fuck. Yeah. He's like barely conscious. He does not know how to form an intelligent sentence. I'm like, Mm. I was thinking, is it opiates? Like, are you drugged or something? But when I saw the beer at the river, I'm like, huh, I wonder how much he actually drinks. And then we end up segueing into the final scene with the Merrifields. I'm like, oh, you're drinking again. Mm. Your eyes are bloodshot. Your anger's a little bit more at the front. I can see it, how he's acting, how he's talking. I think they're both drunks. And Danielle sounded drunk too. Oh, totally. I would have to be completely drunk to live with a guy named. I would. You'd have to kill me for sure. You'd have to kill me, girl, <laughs> for sure. And my misery, seriously. Before I killed him. Well, that would make a lot of sense. Why he's so weird, like the way he talks and stuff, and yeah. he's so dead in his eyes all the fucking he's time. He's dull the way he talks. Yeah, he doesn't sound smart, even when he's trying to convince us that the Holy Spirit's trying to have <laughs> sex with us and that he's going to ejaculate into our brain. <laughs> You sound dumb as fuck, dude. <laughs> well, God told him that, so that's blasphemous that you're going against God's word. Am I? Yeah. I think out of the two of us, I might be on the right side of history there, but okay. <laughs> you fucking asshole. Not you. I'm talking to Gary. Yeah, no, for real. Well, yeah, so then we get into this last scene. Danielle kind of opens it with talking about how she doesn't feel like Natalia's uh, making any effort with her. She's only talking to Garrick. And anytime she expresses this to Garrick, he's just very like dismissive. He doesn't think it's a problem. And then we have her recording Garrick while they're fighting in their kitchen, which so their kitchen looked really nice. I will say. I guess. It looked pretty nice. But I don't know why she's recording this. And I'm like, is this staged? Like, is mm. this fake just content for the show i think it's in contemplation of content for the show but i think she's making a drunk decision to do it ah like i don't think they planned it ahead Mm -hmm. to have this argument about this i think she's really fucking pissed about it and i think oh let me turn on my my let me turn on my phone let me start recording so that we can include this in the content Mm. and i think that it's very interesting first of all danielle comes off looking like a weirdo yeah like why are you bugging honey yeah that natalia didn't respond to you within two hours i think she's mad because she's trying to reach out to natalia and natalia is not responding to her but in that time natalia is responding to garrick so natalia is clearly by her phone yeah but not responding to danielle yeah and She's telling this to Garrick and Garrick's like, well, I mean, you take two hours, four hours, eight hours to get back to her. She's like, I don't do that. Like she's getting so unreasonable and irrational, making me think 
once more that is this like a sexual inclination? Like, is this a relationship on a deeper level that you're trying to have? Because if my friends don't text me back in four hours, I'm okay, honey. Yeah. I'll be here when you can get back to me. I realize people have jobs. Natalia is a fucking attorney. Right. In Brazil, there's a time difference, I think. I have no idea, Mm -hmm. actually. But that was wild to me. Yeah. How she was freaking out. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because of the sexual component or if it's because she's drunk or if it's because of both. Like she's like recording this and she's getting so heated over her not texting her back. Like, why do you care? Unless you love Natalia or unless you're trying to prove a point to Garrick in a really dumb fucking way that this girl actually isn't in it for the right reasons that you think it should be. Like, I think Garrick's like, I don't fucking care because I'm just going to go bang Natalia. Mm -hmm. Like, I really don't care if she doesn't text you. I'm not in it for the sister wife relationship. I'm in it so I can get my pencil wet. Like, so he just looks at Danielle, like, why do you care? It's God's will. Remember? It's not a big deal. Yeah. Like, why does this matter? I think what it really is, is that Danielle sees that Natalia and Garrick are forming a deeper relationship to the exclusion of her. Like, that's going to happen anyway, Danielle. But like, she's jealous. Yeah. And she's upset. And she knows that he's about to leave to go to Brazil, where he's going to be for one month, even though he has a whole ass business and two whole ass children and a wife. Well, not anymore. Yeah. (laughs) Like, and a woman and a house and everything. Um, So she knows he's leaving and she's super deeply insecure because of the bond that they're forming. And that she's being left out of it. But like, that's the natural way of things if y'all aren't bisexual or lesbian right yeah and like what did you expect to happen like he's going to have a full-ass relationship with somebody else and that's the problem like she just doesn't want to admit to herself that she has such an issue with this because she i think she genuinely believes it's from god and so she's doing all this awful shit because she thinks god told garrick in a wet dream that he was supposed to have five wives and so she's got to go along with it but it's like girl get some fucking therapy but like mm-hmm. in her little film like she had like a selfie filmed video at the end where she's just like i don't know what the state of me and garrick's relationship is because i feel pretty distant he doesn't understand my feelings he's gonna go to brazil and maybe this separation will be good for us and i'm just like okay he's going there for a whole month to marry natalia I mean, so why are you taking your kids to Cancun for the first time you meet Natalia, but you're not taking your your woman and your kids to Brazil for the nuptials, Hello? For, for the ceremony, for the spiritual ceremony? Like, I don't understand that other than it's really just a fuck vacation. It's a fuckation. 100%. I think somebody said that on Reddit. Or did vacation? you say that? No. Somebody said fuckation. It's like, <laughs> that's what it really is. Totally. And like, how terrible must Danielle feel knowing that it's that's all it is and i'm like is he actually going to get married to her in brazil because i think he was telling bill or whatever earlier in the episode that she's a lawyer she's like wanting to own her own practice or whatever And i'm like is she wanting to practice in america this is why i don't understand her motive because if she's an attorney in brazil she can open up her own practice in brazil yeah and i think um garrick says that her father is a man of means and so i would assume he could help her to do this right like what incentivizes her to come to america other than maybe she has actual real feelings for garrick which i can't conceive of at all or she wants the green card like she wants to do what she wants to do in america i just yeah. but like are you really willing to do all this to come to america i don't know well and actually i mean i have a little tidbit of that okay maybe it should go uncensored though all right i just can't you see you have to kill me honey. i'm like i would rather be dead than <laughs> that's what i'm be, saying than have to be with gary oh. gary field but then again i'm like is she telling the truth about her law degree like is she telling the yeah truth we about, don't even really know we don't really know it's just what she told garrick and then i'm like it does she actually want to move to america or do they have some weird like agreement where he's gonna go down there for a month for his vacation and then come back and be like yeah sorry danielle natalia doesn't want to be with us because of you she yeah. doesn't really like you she thinks you're gross <laughs> and so we got to find another woman here in america or somewhere else yeah maybe brazil again for me to go and propose to and fuck 
That's what uh, I could see too. It's just the craziest <laughs> premise. It's the craziest shit on TV. Absolutely. Other insane. than Couple to Thruple, which I have not watched yet, but also sounds crazy. Yeah. yeah. Although I've been watching more episodes of that and it gets mm-hmm. kind of boring because they have a lot of therapy stuff. I'm like, oh, I don't Nobody care. needs therapy. I don't it's like care. It's like Angela getting therapy at the last resort. Like, <laughs> yeah. do we really think this is real or that it's going to take? It's not going to take. <laughs> like all these people are fingering each other right. already. I'm like, I don't care about don't the think, therapy. I don't think a psychologist is going to help <laughs> us here. Thank you. Please. Oh, but we end this episode with Garrick in his truck driving off, heading to the airport so he can go to Brazil. Yeah. Which is very interesting because we've seen in previews that Natalia is complaining because she's not really hearing much from Garrick. Must be obviously when he's returning back to America Mm -hmm. and he starts dating somebody else. So I hope they show us what happens in Brazil. I would really like to see that. Like how she's living. Mm -hmm. Is she living in an impoverished state? Is she not? Is her father a man of means? And like she has a lot of things going for her there. Like that would deepen my question as to why you would put yourself through this hell. Oh, for of sure. Garrick Merrifield. Well, and if Garrick stupid ass actually ghosts her and like doesn't want to be with her, that would be wild too. Because it's mm. like, okay, dude, like you're not a godly man if you're just going to fuck all these women around the world and I, 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 because you want to marry them, but then you're ghosting her because you don't want to. But you can't reason with somebody like him because he's such a malignant narcissist yeah. that he believes his own bullshit i mean do we think he believes his own bullshit oh yeah do do we really think that he thinks this is this the right thing to do because god told him to do it you think so i think he I does. just can't believe anybody would be able to delude themselves to that extent and still function in society and have like a business well, because the alternative would to acknowledge would be to acknowledge that he's a fucking sex pest and he wants to cheat on his wife or be without his wife, who's the mother of his children. Yeah, when but he I mean, or to be- they have an open marriage, uh, well, which is yeah. actually more conventional and more accepted. But she would never be into that. I maybe. think she would put up with it. I don't I, know. I, I just, I, I just can't believe. So maybe he does believe it. Maybe he does believe it. I but think the he way he conducts himself. himself it, this is so unspiritual. I just, it's so hypocritical and contrary, antithetical to what you find in scripture. I just yeah. don't know how you get there and call yourself a Christian. I don't know. Like, even the most crazy Christian, like, would try to adhere to scripture. I don't know. I don't know. He's wild. He's terrible. He's really awful. He's a bad person. He's a very bad person. And I think person. Danielle's a bad person too. And I think Natalia is up to no good. Yeah. yeah. I think she'll probably either scam them or mm. she'll be sincere and he'll be like, just kidding. Peace scam out. Scam away. Yes. I get everything you Please. can from these get another 10K. losers. Please. And then we have the previews yeah. for the next few episodes. So we have Shane worried he's crying i know he's like crying to his bro or something at the bar yeah he's like i'm worried that one of these women are gonna steal away ashley from which is why he is going to serve as a perpetual cock block every single time she starts getting close to somebody she's he's going to see something wrong he's going to perceive a red flag and he's going to obstruct it even though they are still on polygamy dating sites to this day are they really yeah Oh my God. I hope I get to see them. On the dating apps. <gasps> yeah. I hope they're on next season. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. And then we have Justin's weird old ass going on a date with some chick named Yari. Yeah. And sh- this chick does not look like she's into polygamy at all. Yeah. She's like, like, I don't want to share. She's confused about what's actually happening. I, I'm really curious to, s- to see like what she's thinking. Yeah. Like how she's justifying this. But yeah. I wonder if he'll kiss her on the first date like Ashley kisses all of her girls on the first date. <laughs> and then we have Nick asking Danielle from the Davis family if she's okay with I'm them sick dating. Of this. Who cares? Back and forth with Danielle and her you. one eyelash <laughs> crying all the time. And can I do it? I don't know. I'm terrified. Yes, I'm ready. Like, who fucking cares? I told Bring you. Bring off the skank. I want to see the hot tub. <laughs> I know. Make it interesting. I know. I told you. They have nothing else going on. And I think they're going to bring on that other chick. And Danielle's going to cry about Good, it. Good. Cry more. I want to see it. But I bet they're all fucking. I bet they're a polyamorous family. And they all fuck. Ooh. Fuck The soup. girls fuck each other. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Danielle from the Merrifields realizing that she could be a single mom while Garrick is in Brazil marrying Natalia. Yeah. Because I think she's talking to her sister-in-law about it. She's like, I could be a single mom. And the sister-in-law's like, yeah. 
<laughs> Duh. Duh. He literally divorced your ass. And you probably have no legal documents saying that you're entitled to half his shit. And while he's fucking and banging Gallivanting Natalia. in Brazil. And so I know what you should do, Danielle. Go get pregnant <laughs> by this guy. God, and bring I another child not. into this situation and into this world. Oh, I really hope not. The rumor is, is it's a little girl. Because that, that's what we want to teach our little girls. <sighs> is how men should treat women according to fucking Garrick. Thanks, I Danielle, really for not. such a great choice well i will say on her instagram because she's been doing lives every week she does it like right after the episode's premiere because she wants to answer people's questions or whatever but it's everybody just saying you're fucking crazy (laughs) but the last like several lives that she's done have been without garrick and she uses the same excuse every time which that he suffers from chronic migraines or whatever and he can't do it he's drunk he's probably drunk um but this week i thought it was interesting because on the live she wasn't wearing her wedding ring i feel like these people are playing us they might be they're trying to keep our attention probably yeah it's all a plot because she's still going to be with him and probably have another one of his kids well do you have any final thoughts about the episode this week well i wanted a little bit more substance it Mm -hmm. feels like it's been kind of a garrick and danielle heavy season yeah which i'm fine with because they're crazy but I want some things to start picking up, especially with the Davis family. Oh, my gosh. I want the the Sherwoods. I want Shane yeah. and Ashley. I want to see more of that dynamic. And also the Shabooties. Yeah. The, uh, Holish, Sh- Salah Houdins. Salah Houdins. Yeah. Um, I'm very interested to see that <laughs> because I want to get to the part where Nyla gets pissed. Yeah. That's I what I'm see interested it. in doing. And my um, takeaway from this episode is like oh i we got drunk people we got drunk people issues yeah that makes some that makes things click together for me mm-hmm. starts to make sense makes in my sense. raccoon brain yeah well before we go is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons be addressed well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review five. it really helps us grow the pod so thank you so much in advance We will be back later this week to talk the Valley and Vanderpump Rules. Until then, please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out.